Halo Outreach Podcast to keep you updated with everything going on in Halo. Welcome everybody to the Halo Outreach Podcast, podcast that keeps you involved with everything going on with Halo. I'm your host, Kevin Kulex, with my co-host here, Patman. Why don't you say hi? What's up, everybody? And this is our first episode of the show, so I hope you guys really enjoy the idea of the podcast here is to kind of keep you guys up to date, like I said, with everything going on with Halo news, information, game, discussion, pretty much everything in between here. Uh, so the first episode, if you're like talking about Halo Outpost Discovery, because our co-host here, Patman, actually attended the Orlando event, and to get a little bit more discussion about it we actually brought on jeff easterling and also john friend so i want you both guys uh say hi and introduce yourselves to the to the listeners a tallest guy goes first so go ahead john <laughs> uh, all right so this is john friend i head up uh consumer products for halo and uh, now with outpost discovery includes what we're doing and uh, like location-based entertainment and uh and i'm jeff easterling uh, a writer on the franchise team at 343 industries and uh, our team kind of curates the the lore and universe elements uh uh, and brand elements of the Halo franchise. Awesome. Right on. So, yeah. Again, like reach out to these guys on Twitter. Super helpful and friendly guys. And super excited to have you guys on for the first episode. It's kind of like, I feel like we're kind of coming in on a bang, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Way to start yeah. off the uh, podcast. Good to be here. And so, actually, let's start with you guys here. Sorry. Let's start with uh, Jeff and John here. Um, so, I guess, like, kind of one of the questions we're talking about is um, first of overall, like, how was the experience of Halo Outpost coming from your guys' perspective? Because I've been hearing a lot from, uh, you know, the people who are attending in their perspective. I haven't heard much about the people who helped kind of like put it together. So I'd like to hear what you guys had to think about the, I'll, the first go around. I'll let, uh, I'll let John open up just because uh, he, he's been kind of, in, kind of involved since the very, very beginnings uh, of it even being an idea. How have, uh, have we established, since this is your first episode ever, like what, what kind of a rating target are we looking for with this podcast, just to be clear? <laughs> oh, oh, you can. Whatever, you, right. just unfiltered, I'm go teasing. ahead. I'm going yeah, to yeah, keep yeah. it, I'm going to keep it PG-13, but it was... Yeah. Uh, Honestly, it was freaking amazing. It was a crazy ride. Uh, we had all sorts of ups and downs. And by the end of the day on Sunday, I mean, literally hugging people, taking pictures with people, signing stuff, shaking hands, saying goodbye to like new friends, you know, high-fiving people on our team and the Hershen team. It was amazing. It was uh, unbelievable and awesome and made me so proud. And at moments, it was also terrifying and it was hard. And, uh, you know, there's also plenty of us, plenty of stuff that we still got to do and do better. But, uh, you know, my biggest takeaway was we like we built a thing that people loved and had a blast doing. And, you know, at its core, we've got stuff that is worth iterating on and, and continuing to, to tour around the country. Yeah. I think I, I would just echo all of those uh, all of those sentiments and and from our perspective too it's a little bit different you know having been in, in the the trenches of the like the creative process and the logistic process uh, kind of kind of simultaneously um, and and to see it actually kind of all come true to fruition was uh, was amazing uh, and and like John mentioned in all honesty for for all of the amazing things that were to see and do personally that I think the thing that I will remember the most is is the people, uh, you know, looks on their faces when they walked in the door, um, you know, asking them what their favorite, uh, you know, attraction or moment was and hearing them just kind of like gush about a a franchise and a universe that we're all equally as passionate about. Um, and then also just the people who I, I work with as a, as a shout out to to them in every facet and specialization. Um, it's always really cool to to kind of, you know, again, just be in those trenches with people you really care about and admire and respect and uh, and see something come to fruition that everybody poured a ton of uh, of effort into it. And quite honestly, we're also excited about, uh, you know, like for some scary parts, too. Um, and and I, I think that's good. Uh, like really excited about even the challenges that arose that we're able to tackle because, you know, we. It's, it's really easy to see where things were really successful and then to also identify some of the spots that were uh, that provided some challenges that were that we're excited to tackle going forward yeah so I'm gonna I'm gonna pile in because you guys you guys you started with a big question so I'm gonna, oh, I'm yeah. gonna share <laughs> I'm gonna share two pieces of feedback with you that I actually wrote down on my phone right after they happened because I thought oh they yeah were awesome. that'd be great to hear the first of them was from a fan who said thank you for bringing my childhood dream to life. Oh, and that's like, awesome. I was just 
honestly like i actually just had chills again like my, i'm looking at my arm <laughs> and, and it's like i'm getting the goosebumps it was awesome so as jeff said like the people and the fans and there was a there was a there was a lovely woman who i think her name was melissa and uh you know, she was maybe 30s age son with her. And it's funny, I saw them and I was like, oh, that's cool. It's like the son's super into Halo and he's bringing his mom. <laughs> nope, it was the opposite. Was awesome. <laughs> she's super into Halo. She's a huge gamer and she brought her son and she was immersing him. So it was like those fan things. And then the other quote I was going to say is one of the guys on our team, uh, and this is Sunday night after after we got back and um, we were doing some toasts. And he just said, thank you for everybody who bet boldly and busted ass to make this a reality because it was, you know, we didn't start with something small. We didn't start in a hotel ballroom and just say, hey, we're just going to try something out. Yeah. We, yeah. We, went, we, we went for it and we still, yeah, and I get it. Like we still got, we got more to do, but it was pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah just for like the first go around, it, like, it was just like, it was, a t it seemed like quite the package just like for like the very first time I've seen anything like this when it comes to anything halo related like yeah having like those life-size like super well detailed like statues i saw like on different vlogs and stuff like that the ring experience and you know laser tennis and all these awesome different kind of things involving halo i just thought that was just for the first go around i mean that looked really impressive yeah. Yeah. i think it's Pretty important amazing. to remember that first go around aspect of it too because it's easy to think of of like halo and and to assume that anything that that the franchise does will immediately be at the same level as something like a first person shooter game which has been you know those things have been being developed for coming up on 20 years now uh yeah. you know when when you know when you look at all of the ways that uh, you can kind of like experience the brand, whether that be through, uh, you know, ancillary fiction like novels and comics or linear media like, you know, some of the animated uh, features and the Showtime TV series and stuff like that. Like it's I think it's important to remember that each kind of me type of media goes through its own process and development process and growing pains. And then we as a studio also go through those exact same things as, you know, some of these things are old hat for maybe another franchise or another venue but they're really brand new adventures to us so mm -hmm. we certainly appreciate the, you know all of the fans who are patient and willing to kind of go along uh for the ride with us on on things like this right yeah and then uh, at some point we'll let you get an award in but since we're since we're rolling i'm <laughs> not gonna stop yeah, you picked you picked two really bad choices <laughs> to, uh, yes, you did, yes. but, but you can put jeff and me in a room and just leave us there for a long time and it's not gonna be quiet ever um i also we're talking about our team but remember and this is hard to talk about when we're, you know, some we're public facing because this is the Halo franchise. But mm. this, this is a partnership, and and Hirsch and Live is the is the company that we're working with to develop this. And um, you know, they've done an unbelievable job. And 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 the reason we've been able to go big and create things at scale and move stuff around the country is because that's their expertise. I mean, they they operate theme parks. I mean, Dollywood is obviously a prime example. Hirsch and Live owns and operates the Harlem Globetrotters. Uh, oh. They're involved in a lot of big, uh, big brands and big experiences, mm -hmm. and and they're they're a, a big part of the story. So I don't want I want to make sure we acknowledge that up front. Oh yeah, yeah definitely. Awesome, yeah. Actually, I think I remember seeing that when you guys first mentioned that about saying like the production team involved with the Harlem Globetrotters. I'm like, oh god, I remember seeing the sh Harlem Globetrotters when I was like nine. They grew up here in Seattle. It was so cool. <laughs> it's a blast. Yeah, it's a blast. Yeah, we we recently, you know, uh, you know, last year we we had our first like arcade game, uh, mm -hmm. but you know that's not something that was just developed, you know, ground up in house. We partnered with you know Raw Thrills and and Play Mechanics because like the folks that are over there, like that is what they do, you exactly. know, and they brought that expertise arena. Um, and then we brought our expertise, you know, from the standpoint of like what makes it halo and what, you know, the, you know, the narrative and the universe and story and stuff like that. And, and kind of mm -hmm. combined with them to, to produce, you know, in some ways kind of a first foray into, you know, more physical, tangible halo experiences. Uh, and, and that is echoed uh, and, and really only made greater with something like partner with you know uh, like Hershen to to go on a much much even larger scale but again everybody kind of brings their their expertise and their experiences um to the to the table and that's the only it's the only way these things work <laughs> oh yeah because like you know obviously like there's only so many things like three four three i'm sure you guys can like pull off and like if you guys want to do like an in-house version of like an arcade game like uh Hampfire team raven like it probably 
wouldn't come off the same as like a team who like that's what they do like right. that's what they, they work on and then you guys come with the expertise of making it feel like and play like halo i mean and so and that's, 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 that's with sense. almost everything halo you know like you know whether it be novels the showtime series i mean it's it's all partnerships halo wars too <laughs> yeah you know like, you, you know, know we partnered uh, at, at first you know when it was ensemble studios and right. and then creative assembly um you know like i think uh, the best projects are the ones that are, you know, that have good leadership uh, that put the right people in the right places to make things happen. And, mm-hmm. and I mean, John, in all honesty, is, is a huge piece of that leadership on our end that was responsible for, again, making sure the right people are in the right places and uh, to, to do the right things. And, and that's, that's why we're in a position to, you know, make people super excited um, with some of the amazing stuff we had in Orlando, but at the same time, be able to respond uh, to, you know, to, to feedback and, and make improvements and stuff. I know I wanted to chime in. So this was like my first ever convention, anything like that. I was really bummed that I missed out on Halo Fest when you guys, I think that was what, back in 2014? 11. 11. Okay. So yeah. yeah it was the, it was the 10 year anniversary of, uh, of, of Halo. Of CE. Okay. Yeah. So I, I was kind of bummed that I missed out on that. And this was my first ever, like I said, convention. So I was super hyped. You know, Halo is like just, I'm just crazy about it. And I just had to make it to this event. It was like a nine hour drive for me, but I didn't care. Um, so I just wanted to thank Where you guys. Where did you drive from? I'm in North Carolina. Oh God. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so, uh, hey. and I figured I'd kill two birds, one stone, take the kids to Disney World while I was at it. But you know, it was, it was mostly, you know, so daddy could go to the Halo convention, but you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just wanted to thank you guys for the work you guys did. Like I, you know, obviously the reception was overwhelmingly positive from a lot of Halo fans, me included. I had very small gripes with some of the things at the event. Um, and it was really interesting to keep up with you guys and see how it was changing even over the weekend. And you guys already kind of touched on that, how it's going to be changing going forward. And that's kind of the things I love about 343, especially as of late is just the transparency between you guys and the community and outpost discovery is just a great way to bring that community together like that was the main like you know all the stuff was really cool there of course all the attractions were really cool but it was mostly about just being with fellow halo fans and just geeking out about you know a series that we love and that was the biggest draw to me just the atmosphere that you guys created with that event and how welcoming it was i could just walk up to anybody and just start talking halo with them like you know it it was really welcoming and i really appreciated that kind of atmosphere and i wanted to ask you guys you know i i'm sure you guys have an idea of how it's going to change maybe going forward but maybe taking some of those criticisms and applying that to, you know, Philadelphia's coming up next weekend, which I may also try to get, get to as well, because I don't, I honestly don't think one day was uh, enough for me. I, I would like to try to make it to another one. So um, just from what you guys heard from the, the event itself, what kind of feedback are you guys looking to apply to Philly and then, you know, any future outpost discovery events? I mean, first thing is, I'm incredibly proud of how we and our Hershen partners uh, responded and frankly also how the fans worked with us at the event. Um, I love feedback and and we want it and that's how you recognize stuff. And so live at the event and and we were we were iterating on everything. I mean, it's some of the stuff is small. We had put a soda machine in the <laughs> VIP lounge and uh, and then realized that there were no cups. Oh. So I grabbed our creative director <laughs> and we went over across the convention floor and we bought a bunch of those mugs um from wild bills because we're like oops like we missed that we didn't Mm -hmm. think about having the cups in the vip lounge it's like small stuff like that where we were just iterating on site to try and make things better but they're they're two big themes of of things that um you know that stuck with us that we worked on live in orlando and that we've continued to grind on uh leading up to philadelphia and those relate to um lines and signatures so on the Mm -hmm. the lines front um the you know, lines got long um, at a couple points, and we actually—it's interesting—we had the, the the folks from Hershen brought some of their experts down from their theme park business, and we were actually we were uh, we were tracking people in lines. We we're giving they were giving chits to people so we could measure exactly sort of how fast they were moving in the lines, and so we were that helped us iterate live at the event because we could go back to the operators and say, hey, you know, the left side of this line is moving 12 minutes faster than the than run than the right side mm. or whatever. Um, That's cool. Yeah, yeah. So, so lines are lines are the first thing, and then signatures are the second. So, on the line front, there are a couple of things we're doing. So, uh, one is we're going to much more carefully monitor attendance. I mean, frankly, we had 
uh, we had a great turnout on Saturday in Orlando. Yeah. That was awesome. Uh, but it's also a problem because, oh, crap, we had great attendance on Saturday and people came flooding in the doors and they wanted to go to some of the, the biggest attractions. And we, you know, and in the morning we were assuming, hey, people aren't going to necessarily want a bunch of stuff on the content stage. So we're doing a ton of things from uh, we're going to call sellouts earlier so we so we can more carefully make sure we got a great guest experience for everybody's in the building. Mm -hmm. So we're, you know, cause on Saturday, frankly, we, we assumed our capacity was a little bit higher. We had this great turnout and it was too much. So we're going to restrict that. That's the first thing that you do. Second thing you do is in the attractions where you can adjust how you're operating them, then you adjust things. We're, we're adjusting how we scan. Uh, so people who want to scan and using the app, we're not going to, we're going to actually just scan their badges, uh, which is faster than scanning the barcodes that are printed and, and are, and are there on site. Right. Um, we're increasing capacity so we can have more people. We've actually got a big space. We can actually make the laser tag, the combat deck, a little bit bigger so we can have more people and a bigger big team battle in there, right? Awesome, uh, yeah. ring, ring experience, the same thing. We had to work with safety experts and get approvals. And sometimes those depend on things like fire marshals, but we're working on making sure that we've got actually more capacity in the ring experience. So we, you know, we started the morning where we, we had kind of two groups of 10 going through the ring experience. And by the end of the weekend, we had gotten all the approvals and operationally we were ready where you could actually move more like 15 to 20 people through the ring experience at once. Um, so literally on some of those big ones through the course of the weekend, we increased capacity and speed at the attractions by almost double. But I will tell you, there are some experiences and you go to the opposite and, um, you know, the Covenant Escape um, or the or the Pelican Trainer, those have hard numbers of the number of people who can be inside at one time. So there are going to be some attractions like uh, Ring, Laser Tag, um, where we can iterate even the target range. We can iterate pretty aggressively, and we think we've already more than doubled the number of people who can go through so that we can get, you know, our target is to get lines down. So, you know, at a really packed time, maybe the lines, you know, an hour maybe a little bit more, but we never wanted to extend beyond that. And we think we're going to be able to do it. And then there's going to be some other attractions like the escape rooms, which are just going to be more limited capacity. And, and then in all of them, we're going to add signage. So people understand transparently, you know, what they're choosing to do with their, you know, with the time they've got at the event. So if they see a sign that says, Hey, it's an hour from this point in line to go do something, then it's a decision. Hey, do I want to go play Halo Reach on PC? Because that area is pretty dope. Do I want to go check out what's going on the content stage? Because I hear something going on there. Or, you know, is this really like, I got to do the Pelican Trainer because I am not leaving this place until I sat in the Pelican with my friends. And so we're, there's mm -hmm. like, there's, there's actually more. And as Jeff said, I could probably talk your guys' ears off for hours. <laughs> I love it. So this, <laughs> this is, is awesome. There's, yeah. a, spectrum of, there's yeah. a spectrum of stuff that's happening. Um, and on the signing side, frankly, again, it was sort of like, Hey, this is a good problem in the sense that we've got over overwhelming demand. It's yeah, a, I... it's a bad problem in the sense that we weren't prepared for it. So, right. um, you know, so we're going to try and communicate better. Uh, we're going to use what's uh, referred to as the Black Friday model, which is uh, what we had on the website FAQ already, which is first come first serve. Right. Uh, we're going to work to get information out to the folks who are coming to Philadelphia on uh, hopefully Tuesday this week. So they know where the signing rooms are going to be. So if they want to, if they choose to want to get in line and get in line early, they're going to be able to make that choice. And for mm -hmm. other folks, you know, we're just going to try and be transparent about it. The thing is, uh, we're actually going to increase the number of signings we're doing. So we're going to have, uh, uh, we're going to add chunks of time where literally every, but we're going to add like an hour of time where everybody from three four three who's at the event, we're going to go to a specific spot. So all of us are together in one place, and anybody wants signatures. Oh I yeah, that, yeah that's awesome. awesome. Yeah. I get that we're not mm -hmm. Steve and Jen, but there's a bunch of us like uh, <laughs> like like Grim who are pretty well known and who yeah. people are excited to meet. So we're going to do a bunch of those things, but we also got to be smart because ultimately. Part of why Steve and Jen are such treasures is because they're just amazing people. Right. And they don't, they, they're, you know, when they're doing signings, they're engaging with fans and, 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 and like sharing personal experiences. So the reality is there's a limit to, you know, you can't have 5,000 people a day going through. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> they're, they're just, people at the end of the day. <laughs> you know? They are people. And, and, and we got to be smart with them because they're incredible yeah. talent too. And we can't wear mm -hmm. them out because, you know, maybe they're working on other projects with us too. Right. Ooh. Um, you got those golden so, voices. Don't wear, want to wear them out this weekend. Yeah. Exactly. So there's a balance. Also going to every city. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's crazy. I, yeah, I apologize for being long-winded. I'll try and let you guys, in, particularly <laughs> no, Jeff, please, get in. Well, he's I love, he's I love a hell of a lot funnier than I am. But, uh, <laughs> no, this is great. Uh, I mean, and really just a, a build thing that I think that 
uh, that junction that I, I think is important to reiterate is that um, so much of all of that comes down to communication um, mm -hmm. because like being able to, to, to really adequately and properly, you know, communicate things a lot of times covers a, a multitude of sins, <laughs> you know, like there are certain things that the reality of a situation might not necessarily be able to change every time. Uh, but the way that we can communicate it, it, uh, there's always room for improvement there. Uh, and I think that, um, that's another thing is, is being able to communicate like not only just faster from a reactive standpoint, but even just uh, communicating uh, ahead of time, like you, you know, John mentioned, having uh, better signage, having mm -hmm. uh, you know, even utilizing social channels, uh, and uh, and making sure that on-site staff are are informed and equipped to communicate locations and times of things uh, better. Because again, you know, that that is what's going to be able to uh, just again, help relay the message to folks. And then it's easier to manage everybody's expectations. And really at the end of the day, I feel like that's what, even when I think about things from a consumer standpoint and a fan standpoint, that's what I kind of expect of of things that I'm a fan of and, and companies and corporations and, and whatever is, is to manage expectations well, mm -hmm. because things might not also always go according to plan or maybe something is, is different, you know, than I thought, but if I'm being communicated to uh, like on a, on a regular and a positive basis, and I'm able to kind of uh, adjust my expectations, then all of a something, all of a sudden something that is the exact same experience can be, a much more positive one because mm, of the absolutely. way it related to your expectation. Like if of you, course, yeah. you know, if you go in thinking, uh, you know, if the ring experience is a, is a great one. Like if the ring, the longer you have to wait for something, the more it almost has to compete with that wait time. Right. Uh, you know, and so we want to, you know, make sure that we are, uh, doing everything from making sure that the destination and the attraction itself is awesome, but also, that the time that you're waiting for it and the way that we are communicating on what to expect out of that experience, like all of those things kind of work in concert um, with each other. And then I think that big high level view for feedback, a lot of the feedback is broken down into what are the things that we can change for tomorrow? What are the things that we can change for the next city? And then what are the things that we look at changing for the next, next year? year? Exactly. Right. You know, like, so, so, uh, you know, all of those, we, we kind of like think of the feedback and the iteration in terms of those buckets from a really high level view, because we want, again, you know, if we're, if we're on site, we want the next day's experience to be better than the one that came before it, uh, no matter how good the one that came before it was. Right. Uh, and we want the next city to improve and to go smoother and, and, and all of that to build to, we want people to come back each year if possible and, and be able to see, uh, see a marked difference in whether it be, oh, here's a new experience or, oh, man, I got to do this experience last year, but wow, like it's improved in X, Y, Z ways or something like that. So, so I think that those are the two, you know, from my perspective, the two kind of big uh, elements of, uh, of, of how we process and, uh, and react to feedback. Awesome. Yeah. Cause yeah. Uh, I think that's definitely one thing that people would like, I think it, I, I, I like, I, it's reassuring to me hearing you guys talk about that. It's like, I'm saying that it's like, not just thinking like short term, like how to make this better, like right now, but how to make the next event better, even like the next season of Halo Outpost Discovery improve on that as well. Yeah, because some, yeah. some problems, I mean, like some problems can be solved by going and buying more cups. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and then and then some things are, are, are like, oh man, you know what? We really want to improve the experience of this. This is not going to be something that we would be able to get done in between Philadelphia and Chicago. So you know what? Again, it's all about managing those expectations. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. like, hey, this is going to be something that we need to iterate on over from one year to the next yeah. um, and really put it, uh, you know, put a proper like uh, investment of resources in it. And when I say resources, it, it, that could be anything, even just time uh, and mm -hmm. attention. So yeah. Yeah. that's also kind of a hard thing to balance too, is like you have to obviously sell the event to people, get, see people are excited about it. I'd be like, look at this new awesome <laughs> thing that we're doing. Yeah. But then, but like, but also manage your expectations, but it's totally awesome. Right. <laughs> and yeah. As someone actually who had to do uh, like I, you know, I wrote all of 
our um, like discovery dispatch blogs uh, mm-hmm. that were talking about like our you know what the the uh, the attractions were and did like our behind the scenes videos and everything and and that <laughs> that actually is something that was constantly on my mind. It's like how do you simultaneously like really convey what things you're excited about in order to get people excited to go to the thing because we are building a thing that we want people to go to um but at the same time like manage the expectations so that when they get there they're excited but then then the experience is more than they even expected yeah you know so it's like we don't want to like uh, you know un- under promise over deliver is like always the goal of everyone all mm-hmm. the time <laughs> but right, at the yeah. same time uh you don't want to like under undersell in a way because also i don't want somebody to to uh to look at you know things and be like man i would have gone to this if if i would have known how cool it was right, uh, yeah. you know in the, in, mm-hmm. in the beginning so so it is a it's a tough balance to strike for sure and that's something that we <laughs> are also always trying to uh to improve and that that doesn't matter what the product is it's the same thing with marketing games exactly you know you know like uh, managing expectations of of folks uh, you know when you work with marketing teams which a lot of times are third party uh you know uh partners and marketing partners you know um it, it doesn't matter it's like whether you're selling a game or selling a book book or or a live experience Mm -hmm. i'm glad that you guys mentioned what you did because those were literally i didn't want to tell you what my gripes were i wanted to see what you guys got from it overall um feedback from the fans and those were my gripes was the long wait times um the signing was a kind of a, a bummer for me because when i as soon as i got to outpost discovery on friday i went to wait in line for laser tag uh which was about hour hour and a half and then by the time I got out of my match, Steve Downs signing was already, the, the line was already closed down um, because there's just too many people. So I didn't get a chance to get that autograph. So that was a bummer to me, but it's awesome to see how you guys are learning from that. And then another thing as well, I think, I think John mentioned it was about having the staff more knowledgeable about certain areas, like where, you know, how everything should be labeled better. Or And I asked a couple of, employees you know like hey you know where's the vip lounge because i didn't know it was outside of the uh event i thought it was gonna be somewhere within within that event and it was actually located in you know like a separate room so you know a lot of people are just like i didn't even know there was a vip lounge or i didn't know that um i don't know where that is so it's really good to see that you guys are taking that feedback and i just wanted to say that those were my gripes i i nonetheless had a great time at the at the event and i thought it was awesome but it's good to see that uh that you guys are taking that feedback applying it to philadelphia and then future places that's kind of what makes me really excited to go to philly just to see how much it's changed from just the two weeks since orlando well, again no, nobody wants this to get better more than us uh i mean it, it, like if you think about it even if it was from a sheer selfish like business perspective it the priority would still remain that <laughs> right. like but um i mean like it, then especially when you add just the passion that we kind of all carry for it in there like uh, nobody wants it to get better more than us and part of getting better is you know you know hearing from folks like yourself like oh my gosh i loved this and this and this yep. and this and that's awesome but it's also hearing uh but but these were the things that kind of like frustrated me and i, I wish i would have known this going in ahead of time and you know to know what to prioritize you know and uh you know i think that the it is uh, cannot be uh, understated uh, or overstated, uh, really, you know, how important it is for people to provide feedback, um, but also provide it like in great ways, like and, and provide it in um, in useful and tangible ways. Because if you if you tweet us and say, man, I went to Outpost, it sucked. Um, <laughs> it's not very helpful. That doesn't help yeah <laughs> like, but just you write that one know, down like, <laughs> yeah like well, well, well why did you think that well because i wanted to get this autograph and i was not able to get it okay now we're getting somewhere mm, but like how do we make yeah. that experience better for you next time and and for for listeners like sometimes people equate uh like oh feedback is only you know we only like feedback if it's good you know if it's if it's saying that something went well or it's positive and that is absolutely not the case uh i mean we love good feedback that's awesome because we we appreciate knowing when something does go good Mm, Um, but if something is 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 not going well we want to know uh but it's also like is said is hugely important um not only just for us but also 
when we're trying to communicate things to uh, to partners as well. Like if we see a video uh, on YouTube and all it's doing is like trashing everything, that's not something really we can take and share to to try to improve. But if it's like breaking down like, hey, here, here are my frustrations and here are the roots and this is what I would love to have seen changed. Like, man, I think people would be surprised at how many tweets and YouTube videos and and links to things and and blogs and stuff actually do genuinely get shared and viewed by members of the creative team and logistics teams. Mm. Um, and, and the common thread that they have between them is not that they are shilling and speaking overly positive. The common thread is that the way they are saying what they are saying is in a really – uh, a, just a really clear and concise and polite and palatable manner. Right. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I think also talking about po population, I heard, I don't know if you guys know how many people showed up for the weekend, but I heard number of like 24,000 people over the weekend around that number came to the event. Cause I think like the we, first day it was like 8,000 or something like that. I think they just multiplied yeah. it by three, but I'll say anyone can answer that number. Yeah. We're not, we don't, we don't uh, we don't talk about specific numbers, but I can tell mm -hmm. you thousands of people thousands of people came. We were really we were really pleased, yeah. and in some cases, it was better than expectations. Yeah, because just just knowing like that many people and just like the Orlando or I guess well greater East Coast area, Orlando area, according to from, from Pat Flint, Ryan driving them from North Carolina, <laughs> that uh, you know that many people excited to go to a, like a convention about Halo. Yeah, I what just can I say I love this, Halo, Kevin. Yeah, yeah, totally like, awesome. So, so I'm going to agree with you on one thing and disagree with you on one thing or just mildly. So agreeing in the sense, like, it makes me really happy to hear some of your comments. And, and uh, I'm sorry that you had to drive, but I love that you came down from North Carolina. Because when we started this project, the goal was to go to our fans um, and, and not assume everybody gets a chance to come out and hang out at E3. So the fact that we're even, even a longer driving radius, because we actually specifically chose, we broke the country into five parts and trying to find the best city and best convention center mm -hmm. we could that was closest to the the biggest concentration of gamers. Mm -hmm. oh, the only thing yeah. that I will slightly correct you on is we also set out very specifically not to create a con. This is oh, okay. Like, it's not yeah. a con. It's not a theme park. It's kind of this. It's kind of this cool new thing that we've invented in between that I don't have a perfect word for it. So we've called it an outpost. And yeah, the, that, whole, that, the whole yeah. the whole intent was to have immersive themed experiences. And also have content and also have gameplay and also have community mm. come together. And it's like, okay, so. Anyway, it's more of like, just, a, yeah, it definitely counts more as like a community event kind yes. of thing. Yeah, and, and we uh, had a hard I time. I just called, we struggled think, yeah. at the beginning marketing it because we're like, dear God, how do we explain this to people? Because we love, <laughs> it's, this is awesome. It's, it's, it's you know, so it's, eclectic. It's a celebration. The first guy invented a burrito. He's like, what is it? It's not a taco. <laughs> it's really big, but it's awesome. You're going to love it. You can carry it around, right? So it's like, it feels like, like that was our challenge. Mm-hmm. I think that brings us back to actually your 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 you were asking about the the like fictional setting. Yeah. Um. And I found that so and I found like, that really fascinating. It, it and that a lot of that stemmed from the desire to have this kind of weird hybrid uh, type thing um, that you know outpost discovery is a now in our century that you can go and do and celebrate halo as you know halo and and as a game of you know franchise and uh you know and meet folks that are involved with it um both on the creative side and the community side um but it also exists in universe so right. uh you know the 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 simple version of it is that you know following uh the end of the covenant war um you know, so it's in between the time periods of Halo 3 and Halo 4. Uh, you know, humanity was uh, looking to uh, do a lot of things. Uh, overall, they wanted to rebuild. Uh, and and that rebuilding uh, was done on a lot of facets. It was like a physical rebuilding, like, hey, we have colonies that are destroyed and uh, an infrastructure that needs, you know, rebuilding. Um, but it's also like a morale and emotional rebuilding, too, of kind of like the, the human race and the human spirit. Um, and so Outpost Discovery was uh, designed as a 
as a destination slash recruiting tool, um, you know, where you could they could celebrate um, the the accolades of humanity and the achievements of 26th century humanity uh, and remind colonists and, and UEG citizens like, hey, this is what we've we've gone through. Look what we over overcame, uh, you know, by working together and putting our hearts and minds to it. And thanks to heroes like, you know, the Master Chief. Um, but again, uh, from a little bit of in-universe propaganda standpoint, it's also the UNSC knowing that, hey, man, it's a big galaxy out there. And and who knows what else uh, could be lurking out there? And and what if there is something as, as bad as the Covenant or worse? And, you know, who are the next heroes going to be? And how do we inspire the next generation of Spartans and ODSTs and sea soldiers and, and leaders? Uh, and so that's kind of like the, the fictional setting of all of these is in the universe, these attractions would actually be the same ones that citizens on a colony might be going to mm. uh, because they're learning about uh, the, you know, the mysteries of these alien halo rings. And they are practicing at the target range uh, or the combat deck uh, as kind of a way also for the UNSC to keep an eye on potential amazing recruits. <laughs> right. uh, you know, so it's it, 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 it seems that it kind of like straddles both of those lines. I mean, that's where the character of Gabriella came from is, is you know, it's she's she's an AI that has has basically been uh, imbued with with all of recorded human history. Um, but it's the way that that is that knowledge is being used. And it's like, hey, how can we use um, this the knowledge of humanity's journey uh, to inform where we are going uh, and how do we use it to inspire us to remember, like, look where we came from and look at what, you know, what we can mm -hmm. achieve. So I think that that was a, it's a, it, it's a, not an easy thing to do. <laughs> to right. try to, like, oh yeah. Like, just, like John would even, you know, mention to it. It's like, we struggled in some ways even to try to like, how do we market this? And that was one of the reasons why we started doing like the dispatch stuff. It's like, Hey, here are these things that you can do, but also here's what this means in the universe. Like, Hey, these, these Spartan, that you can meet Owen and Hazel like they're real characters in our universe like Owen actually was the the kind of the the central Spartan in um, uh, the books by Cassandra Rose Clark, um, which is Battleborn, which uh, came out last year. And then we have a, another one, Meridian Divide, the sequel. Mm. Uh, and so Owen is on the cover of those. Uh, and then Hazel uh, is another Spartan three uh, that people are really meeting specifically through the outpost itself. So it's a way for people to engage with the universe from a personal perspective, but it's also kind of a cool way for them to get engage with the universe on a, like a fictional perspective uh, and and kind of learn new things about the universe, no different than if you were playing a game or reading a book, right. but do so in a very completely different format. Yeah, that's a whole so new cool. way to experience that, some lore. Yeah, that was cool. I find that so cool. You guys like went to that level of detail to like add more value or just more content that's already there. Just, yeah, just like that extra layer like sheen just to make this that much cooler i just think yeah. it's awesome you guys went into that level it's also, deep, yeah. it's also a way one of the things we set out to do like we were hoping that halo fans obviously we want all halo fans to be able to come to it uh but at the same time like it, when you think about it from uh like a a brand perspective like you don't want the halo fans that you have to be the only halo fans that you have if that makes sense mm -hmm. like oh, yeah. you want more more of them and some of my favorite moments uh it, like john actually kind of mentioned it like he mentioned meeting a halo fan who was then a mom of somebody that you know now they're introducing their kids and i had an experience uh in the marketplace area that was on the other side of the spectrum where um came up to me and she like stopped me in the middle and she was like hey she was like i i saw you like on the panels yesterday and i like sat and watched all of the content and watched these interviews with the voice actors and like i just wanted to tell you like i knew nothing really about halo coming into this thing other than my son loves it so mm -hmm. i was going to bring him and let him do his thing and uh, you know maybe learn a little bit about it and now i am super into it and i can't wait for next year like <laughs> i played fire team raven and i went and saw the ring and we did this and we did that and like it was such a cool uh, 
you know, so many cool moments like that where like new Halo fans being made because when you increase the the ways in which people can interact with your universe, you make it more accessible in some really awesome ways. You know, like I, I've used the example before, like my dad doesn't really play the games, but he watches all the cutscenes on YouTube and he reads all the books because he's a big sci-fi guy. So, really? yeah. He, yeah, so he loves like being able to have ways to ingest the, you know, the universe and, and Outpost Discovery is just kind of a, a new way for us to for us to do that and get people involved. That's so good. That must have yeah. been just like, just seeing, just seeing that, like, just fan, just being, like, literally being created in front of your, in front of your eyes, just being like, this is why we do it, kind of thing. Yeah, and that's just awesome. Now the uh, uh, the lore, I just wanted to touch on that too, mm-hmm. which I did appreciate. As I mean, I'm not a crazy lore nut, but I do love a lot of the backstory of the Halo games and the books. I've read quite a few books. Now we did touch a little bit on the future of Outpost. Obviously, you know, past what's already been announced. So could that possibly mean that? Maybe in future outposts we get something set later in the Halo timeline, like with the Prometheans and and Forerunners and stuff like that. More information about them. I'd say it's a it's a big timeline, and there's always cool possibilities for cool storytelling. <laughs> very yes. vague there, Jeff. Very, very vague. It is very vague. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was actually kind of yeah. interested. Um, it's the right way. Well, to, it's sorry, it's the right, right response, down. though. It is. I know. I understand. <laughs> I, well, I've learned. I've learned that the, the the words definitely and never are both equally evil. Uh, exactly. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Actually, kind of also kind of curious. Like, I know that um, since you guys chose this era to do like content on for Halo Outpost Discovery, um, me, me just kind of like putting my tinfoil hat on on this one. You know, making thoughts of like, would this have like anything that possibly lead into like the ideas or things you want to capture when it comes to maybe the next game coming around here or things coming through coming around like that this is kind of like the time frame we kind of want to focus on when it comes to um halo because i know obviously with you guys uh are trying to like really you're trying your best with infinite from what we've seen so far to incorporate like the new and the older aspects that we love about halo and kind of bringing it together and then like really that time frame between halo 3 and halo 4 is kind of like right when that kind of stuff was happening so i was wondering if that kind of had, they, had anything to play a part of when like choosing like this era to do Halo and not just be like a continuation of things after Halo 5. So going back to the I managing think, uh, expectations. Can I jump in? Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. So on, on that one, to me, the biggest point is, I know, I know. look, it's obviously a huge franchise and we have an amazing, amazing opportunity and project that we talked about at E3 that'll be coming uh, in 2020. But Halo Outpost is intended to be its own thing. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to set it at a time in the Halo universe where it can be its own thing. And canonically, there's plenty to explore. um, And there's a lot to, there's a lot to celebrate. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the thinking was, how do we, how do we find a right spot where it doesn't trip against or bump into other things? Um, And then the second thing was that, that timeframe was really great because we like the idea of the UNSC sending the outpost to Earth at, at a time of hope and optimism and discovery, but also you never know what might be coming in the universe because we wanted outpost discovery to not just be something for those of us who have loved Halo for, for its two decades, but also a great entry point for new fans who are getting interested in the franchise. And so we wanted it to not be all you know threat and battle, but it's 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 meant to... The reason it's named Discovery, Outpost Discovery, is... Because it, it is, it's, it's that time in the Halo universe where we can recognize the, the challenge and, and explore and train for future battles, but also celebrate the accomplishments and, 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 and experience the wonder of the universe too. So mm, I, I would, and, and again, yeah, just to, to echo that specifically, the, the impetus on there is we try to pick the right eras for the stories that we want to tell. And in all honesty, that doesn't matter what the medium is. So if we're doing a new novel, um, we go through the exact same creative process from a standpoint, picking, you know, oh, well, what era is this best uh, set in? And and John said it wonderfully, is that that kind of post three, pre four era really served as such a, a fertile ground for the like the feeling we kind of wanted to evoke as far as like the you know the the themes of the hope and heroism um but also from the the real world perspective of it being a really handy onboarding spot 
for mm -hmm. new fans. Um, so not even just new fans, but maybe even sometimes lapsed fans. Like there are some times where fans are like, well, I actually didn't really play much like after Halo 3. Uh, and so I'm, I'm not really as familiar with the adventures that kind of went on from there. And it's kind of neat. It's almost interesting too, to be a fan who has just read and played everything and been really excited about it. Because if you step into it, uh, you're like, oh wow, like, all of the tense of everything that is written uh, of these plaques and these like, oh, no, like they don't know what's coming. Like, but I do. I like I, I know what danger is waiting around the corner. So there's also like a, like actually a cool kind of like narrative excitement for people who do know what's coming and, and what awaits humanity. Uh, but at the same time, you can be somebody who is really new to the franchise and be like, OK, because I think we can all admit uh that like maybe for somebody who's brand brand new to jump on and be like okay big green guy uh bad <laughs> aliens uh something happened there was a big space hula hoop it was dangerous what's going on with it? <laughs> like, like there, there are these ways that you can be like okay here let, let's catch you up here's here's the story kind of like so far and up until this point mm. um without having to get into something that might make them go like oh crap like this this is a lot like this right. is a lot all the time. But even like yeah. to, to that point, like the play, like fire team Raven to me was a huge surprise hit at outpost discovery. People loved it. What's great about it. You don't have to know anything about halo to play fire team Raven and have a blast. Right. But along mm -hmm. the way we're teaching, we're teaching you green guy. Good. Alien. <laughs> purple. <laughs> equals a shield and go for the head. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Important <laughs> life lessons. <laughs> yeah, yes. exactly. These are, the, these are rules I live by, you know, right? <laughs> but, yeah. but yeah, like I think that what you guys were mentioned, like I think that time frame actually is like a really good starting point for people just because it shows like how much history and legacy goes into a franchise like halo but also at that same time there's so much more to come right as well and I think we, you know really and kind of shows every, everybody always wants to know like oh does this you know does it have connections with with infinite or this or that and and i think mm -hmm. one thing that you can see that is a is a common thread um like uh, you know a, a big shout out to um sparth the uh, the art director mm -hmm. for halo infinite who is doing a, a really cool job in hearkening back to a lot of kind of like awesome, you know, iconic legacy visualizations, and then also blending those with, uh, with newer era stuff. And, and so I think that the, the era that you see and experience in outpost discovery, there's actually a really neat meshing from a visual standpoint, like you can experience outpost discovery. And then when you're eventually able to, you know, play things like infinite, um, even just from a sheer like visual continuity standpoint, it, it, there's a lot of familiarity to it, whether you're a new fan or an old fan too. Um, so sometimes it's not, you know, not necessarily like oh, a deep lore based thing, but sometimes, you know, those are the things that people don't think about when you, when you try to undertake managing a big and long standing franchise is, you know, what are the ways that, um, that your universe is conveyed to people is that the the sound design is it the art design is it the mm -hmm. lore and the story is it you know the the games and products themselves and so to be taken into account and there there are very you know kind of deliberate things that go into trying to make it all feel as cohesive as as possible whether you're playing a, a new game on a new platform or you're visiting a cool fan event uh in some city around the world that actually is a really good segue into one of the questions i had as well jeff um so i know john you said that you know the outpost discovery is meant to be its own standalone event its own standalone thing but there is like i, I do see a lot of similarities especially in the keywords that you guys have been using from the reveal like i, I kind of think back to chris lee's blog post after the e3 trailer a lot you, you know you say words like hope um discovery things like that and then also being a good starting point for new fans of the series to come in and being a good entry point while also pleasing fans of old and i you know i see a lot of a lot a lot of those kind of key elements in outpost discovery which is really cool you know even though it doesn't have any you know could not necessarily have anything to do with infinite but the question i had for you guys both um is about infinite and you know we are seeing a lot of callbacks to the original trilogy and it's like triggering a lot of nostalgia for you know fans that have been there since the beginning but the question is how do you guys stay true to what you want to do to push the series forward 
but maintain trying to please the fans of the old and new Halos. You know, I know it's impossible to like try to please everybody, but I'm kind of curious to maybe get some insight onto what your guys' thought process is with Infinite and any other games going forward, how you can kind of find that balance. Like, wait, is there an actual answer to this question? That's a... That's a that's <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there may not be an answer, but I just like the insight that you guys are providing, so I just kind of want to pick your brain. Um, to be... To, like, for full, like, transparency, I think, on that, I like, I wouldn't, and I would imagine John Price saying the same thing, I wouldn't want to speak out of turn to something specifically to the game because i think that that's that's something too that somebody like a chris lee really would be better to to speak to but what i will say is that you know uh and and this is me speaking from you know one of my favorite uh aspects of working on the franchise team is that i get to work with all uh nature of things in the you know in the universe and in the franchises you know get to work on game stuff but also with the novels and comics and things like outpost discovery and things like fire team raven and i think that uh, you know we think of things uh more holistically uh sometimes in in that it's not just like oh a direct lead in to, with something with you know with infinite yeah. um like it's something that is that a lot of these callbacks that you are hearing and seeing and and even when Chris Lee mentions it, you know, in a in a blog, like these are things and pillars that our studio is wanting to adhere to from a brand perspective and a franchise perspective, and not necessarily just something that is indicative of like the game itself or because uh, a lot of times people want to want to see and be like oh well that means that xy feature in a game or that means that xy the look of something means this and that and right. while those things are like like our pillars like inform those things like a lot of times they come at it from the wrong direction like so you know when when chris speaks of things again like the the brand uh pillars and values for the studio like we are literally those are things that we carry over across our products um yeah, and so wanna, that's that's probably the best way i can sure. speak to, yep. to to that but totally. but not really speak to the game itself yeah that's not yeah we're, we're we got uh we have incredibly talented and fantastic people who do that and um and then we also, also have a lot of time we've also we got, got, some, lot, people got some people like time. we've also got some people <laughs> like us who like i think people should be very thankful that i'm not involved in drawing or coding <laughs> I, just, I stay in my lane because i know what it is and i know <laughs> I know what I, I know what I know and I know what I don't. So we we have people who do other stuff too. Mm. Yeah. Lane has very it. high ceilings though. Mm, of course. Uh, yeah. Yes, that's true. I oh, prefer yeah. yes. Although I yeah, I bash my head on on an airplane ceiling on the way home. Which is, <laughs> uh, I, I, mean, I, I did see. Uh, uh, like... I did ahead, have, I did have this question written down though. How tall are you actually, John? Uh, six seven six eight. Damn, that's all. With shoes on, <laughs> definitely six eight. Without his armor on. <laughs> without yeah. his armor. Yeah, I'm not I, quite Spartan yeah. size, but yeah. I can tell you, I've been in a bunch of meetings with, uh, you know, with Jeff and Frank O'Connor and everybody, and I have complained that uh, I feel like once upon a time, a couple of decades ago, when people decided on heights for the Spartans, I don't think they aimed big enough because I, I just don't find seven <laughs> one that impressive. Like I can, I can keep up with that. I can keep up. Easy to say when you're that high up. <laughs> no, like I'm six foot four and people tell me I'm tall, but then like I went to like South by Southwest and then like meet up with guys like uh, one other Halo streamer stress who's like six eight as well. And I'm just like, I, I don't, I just feel average now. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I, remember, I, think, uh, I think everybody needs anyone. to take a picture with, uh, with Big Zach at the, at the combat deck. So I was just going to say that he was, he was a captain. monster, man. He yes, is, he's, uh, amazing. he's a big dude. And I, I just, you know, I bow down and I'm like, okay, dude, like I'm, I'm going to take a picture with you because I'm happy to finally look very small. <laughs> <laughs> meeting, uh, meeting Daniel Cudmore who played chief and forward unto Dawn and just like feeling like a toddler. Uh, mm -hmm. Like it's, it is insane. That's cool. But yeah, it, that's funny because I also like watching, I think I watched on the Greens, maybe in Green School's uh, blog yeah, about it, show. where I showed like, I could see like everyone in the frame just fine, but then like I just saw John's shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> you need to pan that's out a little terrible. bit when John's on the screen. That's sad. Yeah. I actually, uh, I caught too that um, I guess the local news station was there reporting on Outpost Discovery, and I saw they kind of did an interview with you, and that kind of triggered some memories back in like, you know, the quote unquote, 
golden days of Halo with like Halo 2 and 3 where like media was just all over Halo and the news was reporting on. I remember when I was a kid uh, when Halo 3 came out and, you know, usually either, you know, violence was on the front page or whatever, whatever it may be on the, on the newspaper. But that day it was Halo 3 that was on the front page of the newspaper. And I always thought that was so cool how how far the reach was for Halo. Uh, I just wanted to just wanted to, you know, kind of pick your brain about what you thought about the news outlets coming out there and doing interviews and covering Halo. I mean, it was well, first, like at the highest level is awesome, right? Because I agree with you. It's cool. I mean, I got to tell you, the uh, I've already reviewed the PR, uh, you know, the, the, the PR update and plan that we've got for Philadelphia. And we've got, um, you know, three or four more networks coming to uh, come in either to do quick interviews or, 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 or do shots um, at the event. So it's awesome. I love that, you know, folks are excited and, and people are responding. Uh, it's also a little bit scary. I've really tried hard not to watch any of those clips because, mm-hmm. dear God, like seeing <laughs> myself on live screens is anyway. It's not my favorite thing. Oh, I, I feel oh, with I'm you there. Like I, I can't even stand listening to my own voice. Like when I'm editing a video or something, I'm just like, oh man, I, I who is this guy? It's crazy. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's awesome, and I'm excited that it ha- that it exists, and I'm really looking forward because uh, Kiki is going to take over, and uh, she's going to she's going to be doing some awesome TV interviews when we get to Chicago. <laughs> you guys both need to be like in an interview. You guys probably have the two most badass names at three four three, like John uh, Friend and Kiki Wolf. Kill you. You guys got to have going to have to do something together. Uh, I think Kiki's got the she's got she's got the win on the name front. <laughs> Hell yeah, 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 yeah. You're number two, John. Sorry, I, to clarify. Um, hey guys, I I'm gonna I'm gonna ring a five minute uh, a five minute bell because I suspect the uh, the Easterling has uh, just returned from his trip, and I also know that my lunch my my lunch timer is gonna go off pretty soon, and I'm gonna go start chewing on the desk here. <laughs> Oh, Indeed. Yeah, 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 totally. Yeah, it's kind of getting them. We actually went much longer than I expected us. Yeah, yeah, but we, like we went longer. It's much. Yeah, it's well, been that's great a, though. You get Jeff and me, man. I mean, God, <laughs> people on my team laughed because <laughs> I'm not shy about using the words. <laughs> well, I mean, well, we also, really I mean, appreciate it though. And you guys were talking about like something I like, clearly you guys are both passionate about is Halo. Like Pat and I, obviously, like we started this podcast because you know are both equally passionate. We can just talk people's ears off when it comes to about the subject and so uh bring you guys on as well i was just super thankful you guys are willing to hop on and you know just talk halo and talk about halo outpost and you kind of get your perspective on the whole experience of halo outpost discovery i mean from what i've seen on the vlogs it looked awesome i really wish i could attend but i'm up here in seattle and uh i think the nearest ones to me is like in anaheim but i think that's the same weekend as pax and i'm going to that uh convention True. so you'll have you'll have to come and see the uh see the studio the, the museum Oh there my god, go. that would be uh, you know kind of like a bucket list kind of thing for sure. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll work that out. We'll arrange we'll arrange that. Yeah, that'd be uh, that'd be awesome. Yes. And John, I hope to see you in Philly if I if I do end up making that drive. Depends if I feel like driving again, but uh, might come up for Sunday. Yeah, if you do drive safe. Okay. Mm-hmm. But if it if it works out, that'd be awesome. I would love it. Now we appreciate uh, the the chance to come on and chat with you guys. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. No, thank you guys for coming on. I really appreciate it. And uh, I hope uh, hope you guys enjoyed your time and enjoy the rest yeah, of your time. Yeah, get some rest. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Awesome. <laughs> thank you, guys. All right. No thank problem. you. Yeah, you guys have a good day. All right, so we planned on going over SPV3, the Halo Custom Edition mod made by some fans, but this podcast ran a little bit long, so we didn't want to make it too long, too much of a drag for you guys. We really just enjoyed the insight that Jeff and John provided, so maybe we'll get into that next week if we don't have any major news come out between now and then. Uh, I'm pretty sure Kevin would be down to share his opinions. Me and him played that game pretty extensively, and uh, we both did a review on it. So it would be nice to go over some of the uh, positives and negatives of that game. Right, Kev? Oh, yeah, for sure. I definitely want to talk about that because it's, uh, it's a unique Halo experience. Like when it's, not, it's much more than just like a CE mod. Exactly, yeah. It's, it's unlike any other mod I've played before. Um, mm-hmm. And pretty much a nice primer into Halo on, on PC, how that's going to feel like that. That was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. For sure. Kevin, you want to go ahead and tell people where they can find you uh, on your social media, on your YouTube page, and maybe what games you were playing this week. <laughs> so uh, I guess we'll start with the games. Games I've been playing this week, uh, a lot of Halo 5, uh, just because obviously that's just 
I love playing that game. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Red Dead Redemption 2 recently as well, playing, trying to get through that story, because uh, I was like, man, if I was going to play this game, now would be the time before like MCC comes out to PC, because exactly. after that, it's like we game over lives. when it comes to trying to play anything else. <laughs> <laughs> um, if to uh, find me, uh, honestly, just type in Kevin Cool X Halo on the internet. You'll probably find me, but I got like my, my YouTube, Kevin, Kevin Cool X. Uh, Twitter at Kevin Cool X Halo, all in one word, spelled with a K on cool as well. Um, on Instagram as well, Kevin Cool X, same thing. Um, and uh, yeah, get that. Look forward to uh, Pat. How about yourself? Or where can we find Patman Gaming content? Well, well, thank you for asking, Kevin. You could find Patman Gaming on YouTube by typing in Patman Gaming. On Twitter, it's a little bit less straightforward. It's actually my gamer tag. So if you guys want to hit me up on Xbox as well. My Twitter handle is at fear underscore the underscore Patman. You just take the underscores out for my Xbox tag, and that is the same thing. On Instagram, at Patman Gaming. And as far as what I've been playing this week, a little bit of Halo 5 with yours truly. And, hey. <laughs> and Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I've been grinding out that game, trying to get that finished out. Really good game. Been really enjoying my time with that. And then, uh, yeah, just getting ready for, for MCC on PC. Hopefully, me and you get into that next round of flights. Just waiting to hear some news about that. But, Maybe we just have to talk to Jeff and uh, John about that. You know, just you yeah. know, pull a few strings. You know? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Uh, you know, can you, uh, I'm pretty sure that's not how it works, but yeah. hey, you never know. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I had a lot of fun. Hopefully, this is the start of a pretty awesome show that we can continue on for a while because... If there's one thing I could talk about all day, every day, it would be Halo, and I'm sure you feel the same. So I really had a lot of fun today. Oh, yeah. It was awesome. For our first episode, be able to get Jeff and John on. Uh, genuinely surprised and yeah. honored and greatly appreciate them taking the time to stop and uh, you know talk to some people on the internet about Halo. Exactly. So that's pretty cool. Exactly. But we'll uh, catch you guys on the next episode of the Halo Outreach Podcast. We plan on recording these on Sunday, so expect them up on monday and we'll put a link down in the description where else you could find it it'll be uploaded to kevin's channel on his youtube but we'll also have a pod being up and we'll send a link or we'll put a link to that down in the description below on the youtube video so hope you guys have a wonderful night hope you had a good weekend and we will catch you guys on the next episode peace out thank you